so and PAO should be uh, set to go. And your stripes are nicely aligned now. Not easy. This is um, for all of you or anyone. Let's tried the Coke and how has it tasted? Yeah, um, the experiment you're referring to is, is our uh, fluid generic uh, bioprocessing apparatus. Uh, uh, Coca-Cola is the uh, major corporate sponsor for that experiment. Um, it's an experiment uh, it's a two-phase system, meaning it does involve uh, a liquid and a gas, uh, the liquid uh, basically being um, a, uh, a sweetened beverage and then the Coke or Coke, and the, uh, and the gas being uh, the CO2. Um, no pun intended, but it, it has had a, a little bit of mixed uh, success. Uh, some of it has worked perfectly, um, and uh, it tastes just like it does uh, on Earth, and in fact, um, several of us commented that a lot of times when we're up here and, you know, the meals that we eat aren't exactly what you can uh, go down to uh, your local restaurant or eat at home. So uh, they do tend to get old after a while, and it really was kind of uh, nice to have something uh, different. But it pretty much uh, tasted the same. Uh, we've had problems, uh, or we've had uh, some problems with differences in the uh, amount of carbon dioxide uh, that does end up in solution. And, and that's the whole problem about this experiment is controlling how much uh, CO2 goes into uh, the solution and transferring it, and that, uh, that same amount stays there. Stephen Young with Reuters, a question for John Casper. When they uh, come to write the history books on this mission and the flight has to be condensed to a few short lines, what do you think will be the one or two highlights of this mission? highlights are going to be the, uh, the visual stimulating part, which are the inflatable antenna and the small test satellite unit. Uh, I think some of the more dramatic results in the long term may be these semiconductor crystals that we're growing. Uh, it's, it's hard to know in the future what the, what the most beneficial thing will be that comes out of this flight. As I said, we have over 30 experiments on board. They're in many different areas of technology and also commercial areas. Uh, plant, uh, plant, animal, science, medical experiments. Uh, in the years to come, uh, who knows, it may be something completely different that we, uh, we didn't pay much attention to, but that will prove to be a definite benefit to, to uh, humankind. Zohar with CBS News. Uh, on Pam Stu, would, would, whichever one of you is the expert on that system, if you cannot get the laser system to work like you want it to tomorrow, uh, what does that mean to the overall experiment? In other words, how good is the data you get from radar and cameras and stuff versus not having the radar data? Well, I, I can't tell you exactly. I know that the, that the camera data we have is not quite as precise as, uh, as the laser in the payload bay. The laser in the payload bay, is my understanding, they could get the angle, could resolve the angle uh, of the coning or the angle that the Stu satellite makes uh, to us uh, to, to within a, d a degree or less, probably within a tenth of a degree. 
Now, the video that we get, I believe, well, they'll be able to get it within, uh, on the order of a few degrees. So it's not quite, uh, probably not quite as exact as they would want. But uh, fortunately, um, mainly through the help of, uh, of uh, Mario and, uh, and Andy and, and, um, and Mark helping out back in the, uh, in the HAB, setting up the cameras that, and fortunately we did have some cameras on board with low light capability that they could actually, individually, we could see uh, the retro reflectors that are located along uh, or around the outside um, or just inside the diameter of the SKU satellite. And that's how they determine the angle of the satellite. And I believe with that video, they'll still be able to get some excellent science. Mark, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the aquatic research facility and specifically the sea urchin experiment, how things are going so far. Yes, the Earth facility uh, is basically a whole bunch of little aquariums, and in those aquariums we've put sea urchins, starfish, and blue clams. Now these aren't big like the ones you might see by the seashore. They're very small uh, embryos, really. And what we want to do is to uh, let them develop for a little while and then fix them. In other words, we stop their development so that we can then see back on the ground how they have developed, in some cases, over a matter of a few hours in weightlessness and sometimes over a matter of a few days. What we're interested in seeing, basically, is how does this development occur without the effect of gravity? In other words, what effect does gravity play in the development of these marine species? Uh, we hope in the process to learn a little bit more about, I suppose, the equivalent to human bone formation, but in this case, in the, in, we're talking about shells and, and the bodies of these small marine animals, so that possibly we can infer other things about bone development uh, and uh, possibly even something like osteoporosis, which happens in human beings and certainly is a possibility with astronauts who spend long periods of time in weightlessness. This is Stephen Young with Reuters again. A question for Kurt Brown. Uh, this mission was described as a commander and pilot's dream flight uh, beforehand. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the flying that's involved in the, the rendezvous you've been doing and the rendezvous that's planned tomorrow, and whether there's any analogy uh, between the station keeping you do and something that may take place down here on the ground, such as a helicopter hovering over a particular site or a, a ship fighting against the current to keep itself in position. Well, the, uh, the flight itself has turned out to be uh, very much as expected pre-flight. Uh, it is, a, uh, I think, a commander's and pilot's dream. We uh, have completed uh, three rendezvous so far the flight, looking for our next one tomorrow. Uh, the training we received on the ground was excellent for, for what we wanted to do. Uh, it looked just like um, we were in the simulator, but the view out the windows were, was obviously much more spectacular. Um, the best way to describe flying a, a station keeping such as we're doing on the PAM-2 satellite is uh, very similar to flying formation in an aircraft, which uh, a lot of folks do on the, on the Earth. Uh, the only difference is we're traveling at much, much greater speeds. Uh, however, the relative motion between the two bodies, the satellite and the shuttle, is very, very small. So it's almost, almost imperceptible, the, the changes that are taking place. And because of that, we have um, quite a few different instruments on board to help us out. We have a COAS, which is an um, optical alignment device for a sight, very much like the crosshairs on a telescope to help us perceive motion. We have uh, uh, the radar that's in the payload bay, which we carry on every shuttle flight. We use it as a range and range rate and angle tracking uh, device, which uh, locks onto the the satellite and tracks it. We also have um, a handheld laser, which is very much to, uh, similar to the, uh, the ones the police departments use to uh, make sure folks are not going too fast. And we shine it out the windows and, and measure range and also range rate to the uh, satellite. And then finally, 
uh, in recent years, we have a, a laptop computer, which we put all this information we're gaining from the other three devices into this laptop, and it gives us an uh, uh, exact position in relation to the satellite, and also gives us predictors to show us where we will be going in the next, say, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And by knowing that, we can use orbital mechanics to our benefit, and by using orbital mechanics, which is pure physics, we can save a lot of prompt, and as shown on this flight, due to our great training we've had, we've uh, started off a couple hundred, hundred pounds in the negative, and right now I think our last um, our total, uh, after the first three rendezvous, we've made up basically about 400 pounds. So we've uh, we've done a good job, and, and we can't take credit for it up here. It has to be the folks on the ground that did all the planning, all the training, and all the hard work, and uh, we just get to be the, the folks up here to enjoy it.